Today's lesson deals with using algebraic properties and logical arguments. So a lot of these properties are straight from Algebra 1. So if you were good in Algebra 1, you should be solid. If you weren't good, we'll work on it today. Uh, first thing, addition property. This is a pretty simple one. If A equals B, then what can we also say? A plus C equals B plus C. This means we can add C to each side. Write those words out to the side. Add C to each side. Next one is the subtraction property. Guess what? It's very similar. So what do you say? A minus C equals B minus C. What do we do? We subtracted C from each side. Good job. The next one is the multiplication property. You can multiply what to each side. So A times C equals B times C. I didn't put the little dot or time symbol because it's understood that those are multiplying. So we can multiply by C on each side. Next one's pretty obvious. Division property, we can do what? Divide by C on each side. As long as C is not zero. Why do we say C can't be zero? You would get undefined. You would get an error on your calculator if you try to divide by zero. You cannot divide by zero. So, divide by C on each side. Last one is substitution. Um, it's a little different from these other ones. The others had a pretty nice little pattern. What do we say for substitution? A can be substituted for B, I'll say any time. They say in any expression. So if A is the same as B, A equals B, I can replace them any time. So that means if I had this crazy little statement, what could I change it to? That's the same as saying BX plus Y. If they are the same, then I can replace one with the other. I can replace this A with a B. Good job. Let's look at the next ones real quick. The next one is example one. It says solve. Write a reason for each step. So this is stating those algebra steps that you're doing. Um, we don't generally do it how they do it. We do, generally do a vertical uh, orientation. So I'll show you what I mean by that. If we start off with 2x, plus 3 equals 9 minus x. What's the first step in this situation? Combine like terms if you can. So that means you've got to look on one side of the equation only. So we're only going to look on the left right now. Can I combine those? No. So I'll look at the right side. Can I combine those? No. So that need, means I need to move something then. What should I move first? Huh? Move the smallest variable first. We deal with variables first. We move the smallest one. The smallest one is a negative 1x. How do you get rid of subtracting 1x? Add 1x to each side. 2x plus 1x is 3x. What happened on this other side? Oh, they canceled out. That's good. They canceled out. So I still have my plus 3 and now equals 9. The question is, where do I write the addition property? Do I write it along here or here? 
I need to write a reason for each step. Where do I write add to each side or addition property? Do I write it in this first blank or second blank? Yes. Do I add it in the first blank or the second blank? No, the first one is always your given. The first one is always your given. So you don't write anything until you do something. We just did something, so we did the addition property. Now we can write it, addition property. We just used it so we can write it. The first step is always write your given. Always, 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 you write your given. What's the next step in solving this equation? Did we get our x's together? Yes. We need to move the numbers. So we need to move the 3 or that 3. Which 3 do we move? We move this positive 3 because it has no variable attached to it. How do we move it? Subtract 3 to each side. So I'm left with 3x. Remember, these canceled equals 9 minus 3 is 6. Now I can write my step. What step do I write? Subtraction property. And I'm fine if you just want to shorthand write it like that. I like that term, I like that shortening. Last step, what do we do? Divide by 3. Nobody really has problems with that step. Once again, the 3 is canceled. I'm left with 6 divided by 3, which is 2. I write what property? Division property. Good job. I really like this next property. It is the distributive property. Um, I really like it. It's used a whole, whole lot in every level of math. Um, distribute means to multiply the term outside by the terms inside. And you keep your same sign. So what's A times B? Well, they're not really numbers. They can't simplify. So we just write A, B. Keep the sign. A times C now. You have to make sure to multiply each term, though. The common mistake would be for people to write A, B, and then just put the C down. What happened there? What was wrong? They didn't distribute to both terms. So this is bad. Do not do that. We're going to practice it over here in this equation. Um, once again, I like writing these out to the side. So negative 4, parentheses, 6x plus 2 equals 64. Whenever you have an opportunity to distribute first, you use it, because distribution should be easy. So once again, I like drawing these little arcs showing what is multiplying by what. So in this first case, I'm doing negative 4. I keep the negative with it. So negative 4 times positive 6x. Negative 24x. I didn't really do anything with the variable other than bring it down. Then I multiply by the second term, negative 4 times positive 2, negative 8, or minus 8. Now, once again, I should have some steps here. What was my first thing that I should always write? Given. Always start with your given. They gave us the problem to solve. Secondly, what did we do? Distributive property. So that's good right there. Those are good ways to write your steps out. You can abbreviate a little bit. That's fine. Now, we're on a two-step equation. We should only take two more steps to solve if you can choose your steps wisely. Do I get rid, I'm trying to get the x alone, do I get rid of the negative 24 or the negative 8 first? I get rid of the negative 8 because it has no variable. It's easy to move. How do I get rid of minus 8? Add 8 to each side. And then we write what's left. Remember, we're going to bring down our negative 24x. Nothing was done with it. What happened with these 8s? They canceled. So I'm now over to my equals. And 64 plus 8 is 72. What property did I just do again? Addition property. Good. Last step, the easiest step in my opinion. Divide by the 24, the negative 24, on each side. 
And remember, the 24 is cancel. We're just left with x equals negative 3. What was that last property that we did? Division property. And that's a good problem. You'll definitely see something like this on the test. On these checkpoints, you need to make sure you show your steps. So once again, the first thing is you write that statement out. And your reason for writing it is that it is what? Given. It was given to us. So that's why I write given with it. Now, when we're solving, what piece should I move first? All right, if we have x's on each side, let's move the x's. We move the smaller x, so that would be the 1x. So we would, how do you get rid of a positive 1x? <laughs> Subtract 1x. So remember, these 1x's cancel, and then we have some stuff left over. So negative 5 equals 7. Positive 2 minus 1 is positive x, positive 1x. What was my reason for writing all that? What property? Subtraction property. What do I do in the next step? What's the sign on this 7? It's positive. To get rid of it, I subtract 7. I'm left with negative 5. Minus 7 is negative 12. Remember, your 7's canceled. And you're left with just an x. How big is x? Just negative 12. So what do we do in that property? Subtraction property again. Pretty simple. Pretty simple problem. On the next one, it gets a little more involved. Once again, we first take what they gave us and write it out. And what's our reason for writing it? Given. You're going to see that statement in every kind of proof that we do. This is a proof of our math reasoning. What's our first step in this equation? <clears throat> Distribute first. So remember, I like to draw these little arcs showing what I'm multiplying. I need to multiply twice. So 4 times 5 is easy. It's 20. 4 times negative x is negative 4x. Be careful with your signs. And once again, our reason for doing that was what property? Distributive property. Next step, what should I do? Okay, move the smaller x, and in this case, the smallest is the negative 4. To get rid of minusing 4x, we add 4x. Good. So once again, we're left with 20. What happens to the 4x's? They cancel. We write what's left. Negative 2x plus 4x is positive 2x. What was our reason? Addition property. And our last step. Oh, divide by 2. And we divide by 2. Those cancel. I'm left with 10 is x. What property did we do? The division property. Any questions real quick? Any comments? Good. Example 3 gets a little more involved. It says a motorist travels 5 miles per hour slower than the speed limit S for 3.5 hours. The distance traveled, which is D, can be determined by the formula D equals 3.5 parentheses, s minus 5. Solve for s. So what we need to do right here is we need to substitute some values, or actually just figure out what formula to use. Here's our formula right here. We're solving for s. So let's write this formula out. They wrote it right there. Once again, I like writing it out to the side so I have more room. So d equals 3.5 s minus What's my reason for writing that? Given. Good job. Now we're solving for S. We're trying to get the S alone. What should we do first, though? 
distributive property. Good job. So let's go ahead and distribute those terms. 3.5 with a little s. And then 3.5 times negative 5. Try typing that in real quick. 17.5. All right, I think we get negative 17.5 when we do that second distribution. That's a poor 5. 17.5. I bring down my D. How did I get that? I did the distributive property. So write that out. Now it looks a lot simpler. I'm trying to get the S alone. So I need to get the other terms away from the S. What should I move first? I'm trying to get the S alone, so I get rid of the 3.5 or the negative 17.5. This is a plain number. Get rid of it. Instead of subtracting 17.5, I do the opposite. Add 17.5 to each side. When I do that, I write what's left. So I have D plus 17.5 equals 3.5. S. I didn't write down these 17.5s because they canceled. But what reasoning should I give for doing that property? Addition property. I have one step remaining to get the S alone. What do I do to get the S alone? Yeah, it's multiplying right now. The opposite would be divide by 3.5. Divide by 3.5. And notice. I extended this division symbol all the way across. Everything on the left side is being divided by 3.5. Sometimes I like to even encapsulate it with parentheses to say all that stuff is being divided by 3.5. And let's write our final answer. We have D plus 17.5 divided by 3.5 is... These canceled. S. What was that last property? We divided. Division property. All right. Good job. Attention. Some people like to do one more step on this. I'll go ahead and note this. Some people like to say, all right, these two terms can be divided by 3.5. So I can actually say S equals D divided by 3.5 plus, and what's 17 divided by 3.5? Just 5. This answer is also good. Um, really, I would just say, uh, how do we get those? We actually divided. Or I would take the terms simplify. I would take either of these answers, but truthfully, I like this one as a good ending step. Because really, this is not a whole lot simpler. Um, I would take either one, though. I would just stop here. Just because both of these don't divide evenly. Remember, we divided both of them by 3.5. So just keep that in mind, please.